Hello everyone, my name is Lamon the Great, and today I'm going to be playing a new game called Dream Daddy. It's a daddy dating simulator where you play as a daddy trying to seduce other daddies. So let's go ahead and play this, shall we? Get the show on the road. Dead tips of 57. Oh. Too slow to read that one. Dad! Hmm. Dad, wake up! Pretend to be dead. That's what I do. I let my tongue roll out of my mouth and stop breathing. Amanda shakes me. Come on, Dad. This hasn't worked on me since I was six. I'm sorry, Amanda. This is the end for me. Dad, I swear to God. Amanda, I bequeath to you all of my earthly possessions. Spread my an ashes over my recliner. Okay, well, your corpse better get into the movie, man, because it's leaving soon. Mm. I finally opened my eyes and stood up. I'm lying in the middle of the living room, spooning a movie, moving box. I yawn and stretch. Morning, Amanda Panda. Aww. Mm. You like dad breath? Go brush your teeth. Oh, she has a little egg for a pin. That's cute. Don't eat too close to us now. Okay, let's build a daddy. Do you want to be neat or muscular? A bear or a chubby bear? Lean. Muscular lean. Hmm. I don't know if I'm gonna go slim and feminine. Oh, oh I see. It's the amount of hairiness. I don't want to be very hairy. So, we'll go with this body type. It's kind of closer to my, my own body head. What kind of head do we have? Boom. There you go. Roundish face. Brunette. What kind of hair should he have? Oh, there are all the little great the game room players. Let's see. What kind of hair do I want? Curls. I changed my mind. I'm gonna go slim and as feminine as possible. <laughs> Space warrior hair. Ooh, purple or pink. Let's go with purpley. Maybe. I do like the bushy curls. Yeah, I think I'll go with this one. Bam! Eyes. Hard eyes. How ridiculous do I want to go? I think I'll go with make myself look feminine. I'll go with those. Those look pretty. Noses. He had. Looks like a pearl nose. Uh, maybe. You want to go anime route? Sure. Go with that nose. Nips. Make him look as girly as possible. That's the way I'd go about it. Got a shower a toothpick. Oh, flirty. Yeah, go with the smile. Do up the lips. 
do it from Gorgeous Lips. That looks nice. Brows. First off, I want to match the rest of me. Ooh. Those are some impressive eyebrows. Yuna? No, we're not gonna go Yuna Brow. There you go. We'll go with that, that way. You want facial hair? No. We like making ourselves look as pretty as possible. At least that's the way I like going about it. Glasses? Shame there's not like heart glasses. That would be cute. Nah, probably without. What about piercings? No. Go with this one. Make it a platinum color. There you go. What about clothing? Burger. <laughs> Eggs. Ooh, egg nips tea. Ooh la la. Flower. Maple bay. Ooh, I like that. Kitten soup. I think we may have a winner. That may winner may be. The kitten soup. Here we go. Looking good, Daddy. What is his name? What name would he go by, perhaps? Maybe he changed his name. Maybe he's transgender. So that would make her him a her. Or maybe he just like to look very feminine. Names are always the hardest for me. Uh, Oliver. Kirk. Oliver Kirk. There we go. Be that dad. Because Oliver can just as easily be, easily be Olivia. Well, I could have gone Olivia. Oh well. Too late. It's done. Did you fall asleep packing? I got most of it done, I think. Searching around the room, it looks like I did a pretty good job. Every box is sealed except for one. Wait. Wait, straggler. What's, what's in it? Looking into the box, I, I see a bunch of old photos and little fold folder al albums. Whoa! I haven't seen these in years! Pull out one of the dusty albums from the top of the pile, and we begin looking through. That's the cute, coolest baby I've ever seen. Damn straight. Only one way your father and I. The only way your mother and I. Well, you know, we had to conceive somehow. And times have changed. The only way your mother and I could get you to stop crying was to put sunglasses on you. But whenever we tried to take them off, you'd start crying again. You spent the first two years of your life with sunglasses on. Hey! That's pretty cool. My own daughter likes wearing sunglasses too. Halloween, when you were maybe four? Oh my god, that dragon costume is adorable. You couldn't decide between being a princess or a dragon, so you went with both. Princess Dragon. Aww. When do, why do I remember crying in that dragon costume? You saw yourself in the mirror and realized you were <laughs> afraid of dragons. Seeing yourself inside the dragon's mouth was a realization of your greatest fear, I think. Right. Yep. Definitely repressed by that memory. And this is you and your <laughs> horse face. Oh. Dad. I believe you named that plush horse Sir Horsington the Brave. Oh. I don't think that was his... Amanda lunges for the photo, but I quickly snatch it away and hold it above her head with my superior dare arms. <laughs> nice try, but this is important blackmail for later down the road. Damn straight. Go ahead and try me. I've seen pictures of you and your... Ska band. 
Ouch, kid. Hmm. This communist's manifesto had the chance back in the day. I look off into the distance and reminisce about the red horn section. Or that red horn section. Hey, it's Emma P. Dad. No, Dad, that's Emma R. I didn't meet Emma P until high school. Honey, I promise you wholeheartedly that I will never stop mixing those two up. Oh. Dad, Emma R has been my best friend since I was seven. Give it, like, a little bit more of effort. Oh, right, Emma P was the one who tried to steal people's pets, fired a flaming tennis ball on the police station, poofed faster in a sleepover. Uh. I think this would be more memorable. Lighter fluid, tennis ball, tennis racket, right? Dad, that was you! <laughs> oh, right. I was a wild child. So you, so we were. I was six when you did it. Oh. Okay, Amanda. I wasn't aiming for the police station. I was just... It just happened that there, there was a police station in the vicinity, vicinity of where I wanted to hit a flaming tennis ball. <sighs> Yeah, I remember you explaining that to the police. They didn't believe me either. Anyway, I'm gonna show this to Emma R later. She'll, she'll get a kick out of it. The first photography award you've ever won. Yeah, and it got us a $20 gift card, card to McFriday's. And then you got food poisoning from the cheesy tostada, tostada blast. I think you mean food, po food poisoning. You know, with a Z. <laughs> Dad. Still can't drive past McFridays without gang. <laughs> Still proud of you, though. Amanda reaches down, deep down into the box and pulls out one last photo. I love you, Amanda. Neither of us say a word. We stare at the photo for a long moment. <sighs> I finally decided to break the silence. This is the day you were born. It's kind of a funny sh story. We got into a car accident right in there in the hospital parking lot. It wasn't anything big, just a fender fender bender. Well, of course, I was freaking out, and the little old lady who crashed into us was freaking out. I didn't know what to do. But your mother, oh ma'am, she holds my hand and looks me directly in the eye. The calmest I've ever seen her, she says, it's okay. It's all gonna be okay. <sighs> she was right, you know. I stare at the picture for, for longer. Maybe too long. I miss her. I can't even imagine what it must be like for Amanda. Mm. She pats me on the back. Mm. Come on, pops. We gotta finish packing. The moving van won't w wait forever. You're right. Mm. Amanda and I part pile into the car and take one last look at the old house. So many memories here. Hard to believe your mother and I <laughs> bought this place almost 20 years ago. Mm. Hey, remember when I sh shattered the front window playing catch? You always had a very strong. You've always had very strong arms. <laughs> Hey, remember when I, when I shattered the other front window pretending to be a robot who breaks windows? <laughs> you were a very imaginative child. All right. Hey, remember when I broke the back window? We, we get it, America. Amanda. You break stuff. Yeah. And there'll be plenty more stuff for me to break in the new place. Memories to make and stuff to break. You ready? We sit in, the, we sit in silence for a moment. I watched my daughter grow up in a in this house. I will forever hold a place in my heart, but it stings a little bit to leave it behind. I'm ready. The moving van begins to pull away, and I get the car, car into position to follow it. I watch our house, our old house, disappear in the rear view, view mirror. So, so what? Hmm. So, sell me on our new cool pad, cool new pad. I clear my throat and do my best cheesy announcer voice. 
<clears throat> Nestled in beautiful, scenic downtown Maple Bay, our new house features... Washer dryer hookups, a two car garage, most, multiple places to sleep. I think I'd be more excited about this. Honey, have you ever had dirty clothes? For most of my life, yes. Well, worry about that no longer, as our new place features machinations that will not only clean your clothes, but dry them directly th thereafter. Hmm. An upper, upper class luxury, I fear. The concept, the concept of clean clothes is no longer in the hands of the fat cats downstairs, upstairs, sweetie. Anyway, it's also smaller than our last house. Cozier, one, one might argue. Good spin. Yes. I think it's great. We, won't we need be closer to a lot of the cool stuff that we can walk to? So I don't have to waste gas and... I mean, trying to park downtown is, you know, Amanda, you know we're gonna have to, you're gonna have to learn to parallel park at some point, right? Mm -hmm. Not gonna happen, Pops. I think someone needs to do a three-point turn on, on their attitude. <laughs> I don't know how to do that either. Have you met the neighbors yet? Not yet, but the neighborhood seems pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. So you won't have to chase any rowdy teens off your lawn? You are the very teen you mock when you say that, honey. Hmm. I'm in, the, in my last year of high school. I'm practically dust. Yeah, you're, you're a real. Eh? Don't you dare. Senior. <laughs> Dad, I know where this is going. Citizen. <laughs> I'm just going to ignore that. Huh. But I won't forget it. So, what's what's item number one on the new house agenda? Well, first we need to forge a path through the solid wall of boxes that's blocking the living room. I still have to install the washer dryer. We need to go grocery shopping? Hmm. Pops, cool your jets. You have to promise me that we're gonna take a break and explore the neighborhood. Okay, okay, you're right. We'll get some work done and then check out, check the, check the area out. We pull up to the new house and step outside. The lawn is freshly, fleshy mown, and the for sale sign is still in the yard. Hmm. Hiya! And with a swift kick from Amanda, the for sale sign is no more. Nice form, sweet pea. I got a problem with authority. I'm so proud. Man, all that all that karate choppy, chopping tuckered me out. I really could I could really go for a sandwich. Hmm. An ice cream sandwich. Sweetie. It's ten AM. We need to unpack first, need some coffee ASAP. Did you even see all the dogs in the park? Anybody? Mm. Need some coffee ASAP. I gotta get my hands on a nice hot cup of the old bean juice or I'm gonna be useless all day. I think we passed a coffee shop on the way here. Maybe we could check that out. Let's do it. Sounds like fun. Check. <sighs> We walk down the street to the coffee spoon, a cute little place on the corner. Man, this is this is in such a convenient walking distance from our place. I mean, I guess. What's wrong? Why would I do go somewhere else and drink coffee on the couch when I could just drink coff drink better coffee at my at home on my own couch and not ha have to make awkward eye contact with other people? At least when I'm home, some random guy isn't going to come up and sit on the recliner, recliner next to me, and I won't feel, like, a little weird about it, because technically he's not sitting at my table, but he is very much within my personal zone. Dad. And what's the etiquette that when you get, have a dirty mug? Is there a bin 
Do you see? Do you go set it up on the counter because you don't know where else to put it? Or do you leave it there and feel your f face flush out? Flush out. Ha! With shame as you consider the possibility that this that is there and that there is in fact a bin somewhere we're out of sight. And now you're, you're that jerk who left their mug. Dad. Dad, are you just afraid of, to meet new people? Yes, Amanda! We walk inside. Mm. The inside of the shop, shop is incredibly warm and inviting. Vinyl records line the walls and patrons lounge around on well-worn worn in couches. Some cool tunes spin on the record player next to, to a little stage. Hey. Welcome to the co coffee spoon, guys. How's it going? What's with the name? Uh -oh. oh, it's a. Uh, it's kind of dumb. Hey. It gets mentioned in this poem I like, and I thought it was a good idea for, at the at the time. And I suppose now it's still a good idea because like the business is still running. Hey, that works. But people ask me that question all the time. I give them this. this. I give them the same answer every time, and now I'm standing here rambling, and I'm sure we're all getting more and more uncomfortable the more I keep talking, but man, we're in it now, and I can't stop. Hey. Potential love interest. Hmm. So what'll it be? I scan the chalkboard menu and I'm immediately over overwhelmed. I'll have a... Godspeed, Godspeed you! What a coffee! Iced Tegan and Sarah? Uh, chai Antwood. Really? So... <laughs> uh, I don't like drinking coffee black. Tea is nice. Chai. I do like chai. Spicy. I don't get it. Oh, it's a pun. <laughs> Diane Wood is a South African rap group. They're pretty well known for their uh, evocative Im imagery and hyper-stylized music videos. Their music is as catchy as it is disturbing. Hmm. Undo that thing again, but coming right up. And for you, I have a macchino, macchiato di Marco, please. Coming right up. Do you want that in, a, in small, medium, or biggie small, smalls? Uh, medium. Wait, is biggie smalls big or small? Uh, I should. Ch Change that, shouldn't I? Matt sets up, the, sets up to making our drinks, and Amanda and I are take a seat on one of the couches. What's his deal? Let the man make his puns. They're cooler bands than you listen to, anyways. Hey, hey! Scott was cool once. This couch is actually pretty comfy. Maybe not comfier than our couch, but it's all right. Good lum, lum, uh, good lumbar support. You sink right into it. Okay, it's comfier than our couch. Amanda nudges me. This place is right next to our house, and that guy seems not only cool, but also just as uncomfortable with talking up to other people as you are. You should really totally become friends with them. Sounds like a plan. Uh, I don't know. Come on. What do we say say about meeting new people? I can't meet meet new people if I'm always stay inside and also don't go outside and also don't talk to people. See, we're making progress. Matt sets our drinks down at our table. I immediately burn the roof of my mouth. Good one. Hi. We're new in the neighborhood. I'm Amanda, and this is my dad, Oliver. Oh, right on. Pleased to meet you both. Hey. 
You ought to come by when, when my daughter's hanging around the shop. You two might get along. Yeah, I'm sure we'll come. We'll maybe come in from time to time. Amanda kicked my leg from under the table. I'm sure we'll be here a lot. You know what? Let me get your guys' opinion on something. Matt goes into the back and comes out with a fresh plate of something that smells amazing. I'm working on a new banana bread recipe, and I need help coming up with a name for it. Well, I think we're going to have a taste test a taste test it first so we can uh, get a full flavor profile of, you know, and really appreciate the flavor sensations of. Amanda nods vigorously. She knows this game. Yeah, we need to give that nana bread a taste of if you want us to do any free creative labor. I think that would be commensurate great with, uh, I've taught her well. We have trained for this day. I was just going to give you guys free banana bread anyways. Right, yes, that. Matt serves us each a piece. Amanda and I, Amanda and I happily chow down. This is amazing! Hey. Thanks! The secret ingredient is bananas! Hmm. You don't say. So, any ideas? I'm stumped. Well, I think I might only be able to give you dead, <laughs> dead band puns, but I'll give it a shot. Banana bread Kennedy's. Grateful banana bread. <laughs> right said banana bread. Mm, I'm gonna go with this one. Mm. Like the jam rock band confronted by band fronted by Jerry Garcia? That actually has a nice ring to it. Really? Yeah. Grateful banana bread. <laughs> Strong decisions. That's art, baby. I wanted to say baby because I thought it would sound cool, but once I said it, I realized that it doesn't, it just doesn't sound good coming out of my mouth, and maybe I should just leave saying baby to the professionals. Hey. Hmm. Enjoy your coffee. Thanks, baby. See? It sounds good when you say it. Across the way, a man catches my eye. He sits by himself, brooding over a cup of coffee. Our eyes meet f just for a moment. I hastily look away, hoping he didn't catch me staring. Who is that? We finish up our drinks and head out. Thanks for stopping in. Take care. Should we go for the bad boy? That, should, that could be fun. Okay. Now that we're full of caffeine, where to? Hmm, we should probably unpack. I got a lot on my plate right now. Did you know that move moving is one of the biggest sources of stress for adults? Is that right behind the constant fear that you smell bad and everyone's too polite to tell you? Probably. Do I smell bad? <laughs> Amanda gives me a whiff. You're fine, Pops. Let's go home. I get to work unpacking the various boxes around the living room. A couple of hours pass and I get some good work done. The washer dryer unit is both washing and drying and we can actually walk through the living room without chirping over boxes. Fantastic. First visitor already? I walk over the door and open it. Hello? A handsome, clean cut man stands at my door, brandishing a plate of cookies. Oh my. Hello? Hey. Oh, where are my manners? My name is Joseph, and I'm your next-door neighbor. Well, hello there. Oh, yes, hi, I'm Oliver. That's... That's what my name is. I thought the movie man thought I'd bring over some cookies. My daughter, Christy, wanted me to let you know she baked them herself. Joseph leans in and whispers, but between you and me, she just sprinkled in in the chocolate chips. Uh, <laughs> you both share a laugh. Kids, right? Wow! Cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Jo Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a smile. Well, thanks for the cookies. 
Amanda disappears on the cookie. <laughs> Amanda, come. And she's gone. That's my daughter. Her name is Amanda. She's a charmer. <laughs> Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. Mm. Children in general are just tough. True. I hear that. I hear that. I mean, they'd have to be something wrong with you to raise more than two. Yeah. I have four kids. Whoops. What have you done? Oh, uh, I meant... Don't worry. You didn't mean to be rude. Oh no, this is the first neighbor I've met and my social life is already in a tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to make move again. Uh, yeah. Okay. Is the missus around? No, not anymore. She died. Aww. Oh. Aww. I'm, I'm sorry for your loss. No, no, it's alright. Wow. This is uncomfortable. We stand there quietly for a moment, acutely aware of how awkward we both made things. I'm sorry, can you close the door real quick? I look at Joseph quizzically but comply, for after a second I hear a knock on the door. Smiling, opening it, I see Joseph standing there with a huge smile. Hey, I'm your new neighbor, Joseph. I promise not to talk about your dead spouse this time. I'm throwing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac. Oh, cul-de-sac. And I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in our community. What do you say, pal? That sounds like fun. I wonder what one of those are like. That sounds great. My daughter Amanda and I would love to stop by. I did that sound like a lot of fun. Also, four kids is a perfectly normal amount of children to have. We shake hands to seal the deal. Well, neighbor, I'll see you at 3 p.m. sharp on Saturday. Sure thing, neighbor. Joseph Joseph stops, starts walking away, but stops to think for a second and turns around. Hey, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If you ever need a need to talk about stuff, I'm the youth minister at a church down the street. Well then, uh. Oh, I don't know. I couldn't really consider myself a youth. Yeah. You look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. Oh my, he was flirting. He was flirting up the storm. And with that, Joseph, Joseph's gone. He seemed nice. And Amanda walks back into the living room, crumbs on her face and cookie in hand. That was the smoothest recover I've ever seen. I should be t taking notes. Yeah. See? You're already fitting in great. Where'd those cookies go? Uh -huh. They're gone. I'm sorry. Yeah. If it makes you feel better, they weren't very good. So, I ate, so you ate, ate all of them anyways. Hey. I guess that makes, it, makes it break time. Any ideas? Let's go get some fresh air. Um, let's bring your his plate. I think we get a ton of good neighbor points if we bring this back. Hey. We're gonna be the best neighbors in this cold sack. We're gonna kick all the other neighbors' butts with kindness. Kick them with kindness. Yes. Amanda and I step outside. Hey. Shoot. I'm actually not sure what, which house this is. Hmm. I'd hazard a guess it's the big one with all the well-groomed blonde children sitting in the yard. Good eye, kid. And remember, we need to make a positive first impression here. Keep it light. We walk up to the kids and wave. <laughs> I love how they have like a soulless look in their eyes. Especially these two over here. Like, kind of like children of the, of the corn or something. Hi. Uh, kind of. You get what I mean. Hey guys, is your dad around? They all just stare at us blankly. We just wanted to, uh, return this nice place, and thank you for the cookies. Jeez, these definitely are Joseph kids. They all look direct, look exactly like him. Christy. They were really good. I mean, I heard they were good. I didn't get to eat, to eat any. I chuckle nervously. Well, okay. We're just gonna set this plate down on the ground, real gentle, and back away slowly. Right, Dad? Right. That's what we're gonna do. 
the kids' eyes bore into us with as we scurry away. I could feel their gaze on my back even as we approached our house. Mm. Well, that's kinda. I don't even know. Okay. I need something to get my mind off those carbon copy kids. Um, let's go check out the park. Yeah! Let's go pet some doggy dogs. In a minute, I begin to stroll through the neighborhood. I can't believe how beautiful it is outside. Kids are playing in the street, the flowers are in bloom, and the, fa and the faint smell of a nearby barbecue drifts through the air. This place is nice. Too nice. I don't trust it. Good eye, honey. You can never be too careful. See that baby in the shoulder over there? Government. <laughs> Government operative. Hmm. We're on to you, baby. Hey. We walk for a while and eventually end up at a small park. Toddlers chase, chase each other through the playground, and dogs of all shapes and sizes romp through the grass. It's pretty crowded, but Amanda spots a nice empty bench. We start to make our way over to it when... Heads up! Ow! Frisbee suddenly hits me in the face! Woof! A corgi with a neat plaid handkerchief tied around its neck bounds up to me, wagging its tail. Aww. Hello! Arf, arf! That's really the only thing you say to a dog. You just, hello, and pet him. You pet him and you love him? Okay. He runs around in a circle and nudges my leg with his nose. Oh, God! This is the cutest dog. Pet the dog. Pet the dog. But where do I pet the dog? Give him head rubs, chin scratches. We just met this dog. Head rubs. He seems to love a good head rub. And all smiles here. You definitely could have caught that. Oh my. A guy in a Hawaiian shirt jogs over to us and takes a fr the frisbee from from me. Uh. You know, frisbees are tr traditionally caught with your hands, not your face. Well, I didn't see it coming. Well, you're traditionally not supposed to aim for people's heads. I'll catch it with my teeth next time. You caught me off guard on this run. Not again. Not ever again. <laughs> ha! I'm just messing with you. I'm Brian, by the way. I'm Oliver, and this is my daughter, Amanda. I look over at Amanda only to find her sitting on the ground, rubbing the dog's tummy. Aww. Hi. Yes. Your dog's cool. Ah, old Mac Shuffle sure loves the attention. It's great to see another father and daughter out here on such a sunny day. Where's yours? Brian gestures over a, to a grassy knoll where a gr young girl sits on the checkered blanket. She's reading a book bigger than her head. She puts it down and heads over to us. Hey. This is Daisy. Aw, she's cute. She's reading the brothers Karamazov. I don't know how to say that word. Her teacher tells me that she she ha has the reading comprehen comprehension skills of a high schooler. How old is she? Uh. Ten. Really? She's ten. She's a precautious. Ten. She's a precautious little youngster. Huh? Whoa! Hmm. A dad natural instinct. <laughs> my dad natural instinct kicked in. I must brag about my child's accomplishments. Is that Pokemon music? Or Pokemon-esque music? Oh no, it's happening! Uh, or, oh, god. <laughs> Brian! Go on, Daisy! Tell them about yourself! Daisy, oh, I... That's my girl! Oliver! Amanda, get in there! Amanda! Okay, okay! Oliver's HP 80. Brian's HP 80. Brag. Amanda here just recently won a local photography award. Brian, wow, congratulations! Brian loses 10 HP. Daisy actually just won the statewide poetry contest. Whoa, damn. 
It was 15 HP. Uh, what's DHTR? Can't switch daughters. Amanda is your only daughter. Oh, I got it. Item. Uh, spelling me photo. Fumbling through your phone's browsers, you managed to pull up a photo of Amanda winning her 10th grade spelling bee. Well, congratulations, Amanda. Daisy is getting prepped for her annual spelling bee right now. Hopefully this will be her third one in a row. Thanks! That backfired. Daisy started a weekly chess club at her elementary school computer club, computer lab. See, he's the president too, of course. Amanda, dang, my high school doesn't even, doesn't even have a chess club or a computer lab. You lose, oh wow, I'm losing all kinds of points. What, what other things do we have? Uh, child art. You unfurl your wallet to reveal a tiny copy of a drawing of a cornucopia Amanda did in the first grade. Cute! It is very impressive, but Amanda generally, genuinely appreciates you holding on to it. Brian loses 20, 10 HP, you regain 20. Nice! Daisy sold enough candy bars this year to get the top prize, a canoe! Wow, that's cool. We're taking it on next weekend. How is that even possible? Amanda could barely get one of those sticky hand things. That's extra powerful. You lo Okay, so I didn't really lose or gain anything. Items. Well, grade card. You pull out a wrinkled copy of Amanda's last grade card up out of your back wallet. Amanda! Dad! Awesome grade! Brian loses 25 HP! You really carry that around everywhere? Ouch. Maybe it is kind of weird. You lose 5 HP. Did I mention Daisy said her first word at, at 10 months? <laughs> Amanda's was potty! Still, so cute, but this isn't the time for to bring it up. You lose 10 HP. Oh, we're evenly matched. Oh, what does a band aid do? With a flourish, you produce a band aid from your pocket. Take a knee and start to apply it to Amanda's arm. Man, what are you doing, Dad? Oh, look, being a protect protective parent. <laughs> Everyone would agree that it is an unusual gesture. You <laughs> lose 10 HP. These years all of has all of her adult teeth. Never had a cavity either. Amanda self consciously pushes her lips together to hide her teeth. Aww. It's extra powerful. You lose 20 HP. Ooh, shit. I'm almost. Last week, unprompted, Amanda helped an old woman with her grocery bags. It's extra powerful. Brian loses 20 HP. Words aren't all these is good at. By the way, her math is amazing. One time, I actually called her to a double check my numbers before I made a cut for the sport cheat beam. You did that more than once, Dad. Doesn't that say more about him than it does about Daisy? Still. Well, looks like I lost. Dang, he's really got a speed. Boy, it's been such a treat getting to meet you two. Ah, did we have to add insult to the injury by being such a gracious winner? Well, oh well. Parroting is on a competition anyways. Just saying. So, I take it you guys are new to the, to the neighborhood. We just moved in. Do you live around here? <laughs> yeah, we live in that cul-de-sac down next to the coffee shop. Yeah. What a coincidence. That's where we, we live too. Small world. Yeah, Daisy and I are in a little ranch style house on the corner. I know that house. It's just like ours, but slightly bigger and better landscape. Does this guy have to do out do me at everything? Well then, what a lovely place. Hey. Well, I don't want to make it up any more, take up any more of your, of your time. Really nice meeting you guys. You'll have to stop by at some point. We'll do. Yeah, definitely. Bye. Brian and Daisy walk further into the park with Maxwell ha happily trotting along in tow. Do you get the feeling that he was trying to one-up us? Huh? Trying and succeeding. I don't believe that kid's only ten. What was I even doing at her age? Uh, 
I believe he had a bit of things, a bit of a thing for horses. Shame that that it didn't pan out. Could have majored a, in comparative horse studies. It's not too late to, to minor in horse creative writing. Yeah. Too close to the truth, truth, Dad. Ugh. Let us never speak again. Speak of the fantastic adventures of Sir Horsington the Brave, an epic in seven parts of by a man, Kirk. <laughs> we laugh off the horse epic and walk around the park for a bit more, enjoying the day. Go take a nap. All the sunlight is making me real tired. I don't think I got enough sleep last night. You slept for 14 hours. Exactly. I'll leave all these little dad tips at the bottom. As we're walking home, I hear heavy footsteps come from up behind us. Oliver, bro! Hey. I turn around and meet it. I'm greeted by a familiar face jacking up, up to us. Craig? Bro? Bro! Holy... Wow, I haven't seen Craig in forever. It's been too long, dude. Yeah, wow, you look great. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up my act. Cleaned up his act? Are you kidding me? He's ripped! Amanda, this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while, too. <laughs> Amanda, dude. You probably don't remember me, but you're so big now. Hello, and hello, cute baby. Nice. Aw, thank you. The last time I saw you, I think you were about her size. This is River. Say hi, River. He picks up her tiny wrist and waves it around. River g gurgles happily. Aw. Are you babysitting? Hmm. Nah, dude. River's my kid. Man, it has been a, lo it has been a long time. Feels like one minute we're ro rolling up to exams with bad hangovers, and next we're both fathers. Where, where you been, man? Hmm. I was working out in California and relocated the business back to Maple Bay. No kidding. Amanda and I just moved it to this to the side of town. How's Smashley doing? Oh. I mean, Ashley. Ashley is her name. I don't know. She actually still goes by Smashley, and uh, we got divorced last year. Ah, uh, dude, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. It's old news. We take turns take care of River and the twins. It's all copaseptic. Twins? You have three kids? Ain't life something, bro? R right? Peg Stan Craig is a father of three. Mm. Oh, he's making bubbles. He's making the bubbles. Peg Stan Craig. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, it was my old college nickname. He got it because he he did a lot of keg stands. Nice. It's that thing where you do a handstand on a keg and then drink from the keg. Huh. Right. He was very good at it. I bet he was. Ah, bro, I, I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of my daily jog. And I really gotta get, keep my heart rate up my heart rate. Brought River along for, you know, resistant training. Aw. A jog? Daily? I jog yearly. On January 1st, when I promised myself that I'm gonna jog daily for the rest of the year, but gave up after 30 minutes and just walk home. Well, it's never too late to get back into it, dude. You should join me. You should join me sometime. Uh, I don't know. Hey. Come on, it'd be fun. We could grab some breakfast afterwards, catch up. We could do a bro brunch like the good old days. All right, sure, sounds great. Hmm. And, you know, exercising fun is fun with friends. <sighs> great, let's get to that going soon. I better get moving. Good to see you guys. Craig gives a, gives a little wave, puts his earbuds back in and jogs off. I can't believe Craig is ripped and has kids. I'm really? Why is that? The Craig I knew is not fit to be responsible for any living thing, including and, including and especially himself. One time I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. You know, you do it. You do you, Amanda. 
he opened a new jar of marinara sauce and then he drank it like it was a thing that normal people do. It was unholy. And then I asked him what the hell he was doing. He said, and I quote, it's basically a smoothie, bro. I guess, if that's what you like. I mean, technically he's not wrong. He jogs. He was jogging. He's like a totally different person. Anyway, we better go get home. I'll be have plenty of time to reflect on how old I feel later. Amanda and I flop down onto the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before he she can sit. Mm. So, is that safe? Too bad we're gonna be putting my stuff right back into these boxes in a few months. No, don't say that. Mm. Aw, oh, Dad, it's gonna be okay. It'll be fine. I know, I know. It's just, you're my little girl. It's gonna be weird not having you around. I'll come visit, and I'll text you every day. And I'll have, take lots of pictures. I mean, obviously, I'm a photography major. You promise? Mm. Of course. Are you gonna be okay by your lonesome? Come on, I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. Right. A dog? Forget art school. I'll stay with. I'll stay for the dog. Is that what it's gonna take? Medium-sized dog, handkerchief around the neck. I get to name it. That's what it'll cost me to give up my dreams. Give up on my dreams. I'm a woman of simple wants and needs. Well, a dog is a lot cheaper than challenge. Amanda laughs. Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slides through the mail slot. Speaking of college. Amanda darts over to the envelopes and shuffles through them. She pulls one out and throws it dress back on, on the floor. Yes. This is from McGowan College of Art and Design. Open it! Hmm. But I'm scared. It's just an envelope. Hmm. Yeah, it's just like my entire future. Not a big deal. Uh. She takes a deep breath and rips the letter open with her teeth. We have a le letter opener, but okay. Hold my teeth while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? Uh, the administration committee has to read your application, blah blah blah. Um, we... Mm. Her face drops. Aww. Regret to inform you that we are unable to offer you admission to McGowan College of Art and Design. Mm. Well, there's always backup plans. You can always go to another college. Amanda throws the letter on the coffee table. Oh, sweetie. Mm. That's okay. I kind of saw it coming. I knew I shouldn't have put that experimental stuff in my por portfolio. Their admissions officer told me they just want to see portraits or, or whatever. I pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snatch you up for sure. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Are you actually fine or are you just saying that? Mm. I'm fine. Really. Her face says the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push on her on this. Eh? Oh, and before I forget, Emma R and MP are sleeping over tonight. Oh. So... You need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool? <laughs> I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yes. Well, I'll have you know I I completely already ha have plans for tonight. So you'll have the new place to yourself. Yeah? What are your plans? Quick, think of plans. Um... Uh, I'm secretly in a marathon. I've got the main meeting. Let's go! Clemmings isn't normally my thing, but you know, what else? I'm gonna put on a nice outfit and go tear it up on the dance floor. All the hottest dance moves, the lawnmower, the sprinkler, the running man, you know, the ones all the kids do these kids these days are doing. Hmm. Alright, but I'm not gonna come pick you up if you pull anything up this time anything this time. Not again. I'm just kidding. I'm actually gonna go to out and watch the game. I'm gonna go to bed. I'm whipped. Have fun with the Emmas. We'll try to keep it down. I know you're not going to, but I appreciate you saying that. And don't forget that you have that amazing 
that meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. Oh, right, Mr. Vega. Yep, totally remembered. I'll be there. Awesome. Night, Pops. I wake up to, this, to a text from an unknown number. Rise and shine, early bird. Still want to go work out? This is Craig, by the way. Uh, holy crap, it's 6 a.m. Who does 6 a.m. anymore? <laughs> Without realizing it, I drift back to sleep. Whoops, must have winked back. Oh, I checked my phone again. Hey, bud, don't want to get your shawl on? I'm ready to tear up this crack. Yep. God, last thing I want to do right now is work out, but as it, it is Craig, I do want to catch up. We can go get breakfast, you know. Alright. Hey, hey, my man. I need a few minutes to wake up, but let's meet in 20. After a few seconds, when our text come in. Sure thing. Meet me at the gym. I stretch and my bones creak. I gotta stop falling out asleep on the couch. I throw, my, throw off my blanket and... Hey, wait. I don't remember falling asleep with a blanket. I mean, my nose have tucked me in after I fell asleep. Bless that child. I reluctantly brush my teeth, throw on the only clothes I own, and that are even kind of gym appropriate, and head out. The neighborhood is quiet and serene. This early in the morning birds chirp, and the grass is still wet with dew. Surprisingly, the gym is pretty crowded. I spot Craig standing out front, stretching. Of course, he spots me and waves enthusiastically. Mm. Hey, bro. Good morning. Hey, good to see you, man. I'm definitely not as pumped as pumped up as he is. Maybe I should have had some coffee before I left. He probably should have. Are you ready to kiss some butt? Help. This is it. This is how I die. Oh, was that a bad mood? Ah, uh, he'll be alright, dude. We'll little easy into it. Hey. I must have a joke, but okay. We head into the gym, and I I am immediately intimidated. All of these people look like, like they could break me in half, and it seems like Craig is friends with all of them. He gives high fives and finger guns to all of the... and finger guns all of the cool jocks in the room. They look like they could and would steal my lunch money to spend on protein shakes. Come on, bud. Let's warm up. We head over to the treadmills and start walking. Okay, I can walk. Walking is good. This is a decent place to be walking. So, I know we... I know we are on treadmills. Yes. And those over there are ellipticals? Very good. What is all this other stuff? Craig laughs. Nice. It might look a little scary, but I guarantee you that all of them serve a specific purpose for building muscle mass. I watch as a dude in a muscle tee flexes a muscle I didn't even know existed on the machine. I think it was once used to pr process grain into flour. What is that? Why is that guy doing that to himself? That's a good question, bro. What do you think he's doing? Trying to crush people's skulls with a sign. <laughs> Using a medieval torture device. Praying to some sort of pain god. Uh... <laughs> There's a tiny man there, right? And he did something that the court found unfavorable. And now the muscular dude is <laughs> dueling out justice in a form of pain. What? Nice. Oh no. Craig is turning up the speed. I better do the same. H how, uh, how long have you been doing the buffs thing? Mm. A couple years. And what, it, what do you do when you're not deading or working or buffing? Mm. Oh, I tw coach my twin softball team. That still counts as deading and buffing. Mm -hmm. Ah, I keep busy. What do you do for fun? Uh, I love learning. I try to live my life as close to a Jimmy Buffett song as possible. 
I can check out my hot pot. Uh, I like learning. I try to educate myself about the world around me. I'm like a sponge up for knowledge. It's so looking up all the intellectual content. You know, history and par paranormal. Wilderness, survival, uh, aliens, mostly, mostly those things. So, you watch the History Channel too? Uh-huh. Yes. We're jogging now. Oh god, we're jogging now. I look over, at, over to Craig. Who hasn't even broken a sweat? How is he doing this so effortless, effortlessly? I'm dying. I can feel my life force draining through every orifice of my body. Hey, remember when my fish died in college? No. I don't like this story. Huff. Oh my god. Is he really bumping up the speed again? I guess I better do it too. Oh, this is fast. This is very fast. And we were at that party, and you vowed to make me feel better. You, t you tell me to cre create a distraction, so I, of course, I do a sick cake stand and get everyone cheering. And then I <gasps> try to steal a fish from a fish tank at the party with my bare hands like an idiot. And then you drop the fish, and it's flopping around, and you panic, and you turn up, run up to me, post cake stand with a dying, dirty fish in your hands that you scoop it off the ground, and you're yelling at me if you have to leave, and you run out of a frat party with a fish and trying to give it mouth-to-mouth resuscitation, and we give him, get him home and get him into a bowl of water, but the prognosis was grim, and the next day he's... Alive and well? Hey. They never did catch the great fish thieves of G Grand Ridge U. And they never will. I shoot off the end of the treadmill and crash into the wall. Jesus, that hurts. Dude, bro, are you okay? Craig offers me a, offers me a hand and looks, at, looks me over for injuries. I'm fantastic. I managed to stand up and rub my back. It doesn't hurt now. But I'm sure it will later. You don't have to push yourself like that. Always know your limits. Well, I think I might call our gym adventure here. You sure? Yeah. Alright, well, here, I brought you this. Craig hands me a shaker bottle full of thick green liquid. I stare at it with what well, must be apparent is di distaste. It's a protein shape, bro. Oh, thank you. He wants me to drink it. Oh boy, here goes. I tap a small, take a small sip. It's actually delicious. Wow, this is really good. Nice. And good for you. It's my special recipe. I'm very proud of it. Bro. Let me know if you ever want to work out again. Maybe we can try running around the neighborhood if trifles aren't your speed. No pun intended, bro. Good one. I'm gonna put some ice on this. Everything. We'll see you around? Or I'll see you around? <sighs> I, I leave the gym feeling ashamed. Craig used to order brief delivery from the pizza place across the street from our dorm. And now he can run circles around me. Literally. Man. I really gotta work on this dad bod. I get home and lie down on the couch. It hurts to move. Oh god, I'm so old. Oh no, I must have fallen asleep. What time is it? Shoot, it's 3.55. I was supposed to be at man to school in five minutes. I frantically put on some clean clothes, apply a generous amount of deodorant, and run out the door. I arrive at Amanda's school and check it in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I feel pre pretty haggard, but not af after not brushing my teeth and showering, but hopefully nobody will notice. Most people don't notice, unless you really stink. I check my watch and I am relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? 
I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vegas' classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. Oh my. I do like your goth gentleman. Sigh. Come on. Come on, kid. I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega? I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy. Are you gonna help me or not? Sigh. Fine. Up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. Oh, what a punk. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class at anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. I get back to where that low rent gird way that low rent gird way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind when suddenly a head pops out of no the classroom next to his locker. Oh. Notion, don't you have a third period to get to? Sigh. So Fine, Mr. Vega. Oh. Now I'm officially ten minutes late, I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. Hmm. He must be Oliver. This period is almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Oh. Yeah, that's fine. Mr. Vega leaves me in, and I take a seat in one of the comically small student's desk, desk in the back. I might get stuck in this. Oh. Alright. Where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Solinger's Catcher in the Rye? Um. Yes, Colin. Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Hmm. The whole class erupts in laughter. Hmm. Alright, alright, every alright, alright, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit back down. Oh. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in this scene that the bell for the end of the period rings. All the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Huh? Remember to do the reading and answer their response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody is listening. Oh. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me in size. Oh. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? <sighs> Both, you know, budget cuts. I had a couple teachers that did a lot of teaching of various grades. Right. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Mm -hmm. Please, call me Hugo. Uh. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but... As I am sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? Hmm. Amanda's never been the most engaged student, but I know her, she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not complete, completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I'd normally chalk this up to senioritis, but this is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? We just moved. Well, we just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of the of the town. And the minute has was more excited about it than I was. Oh. I see you can talk see if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal. And would appreciate your guidance. If she keeps heading down this road, I don't know. I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Ah. Anytime. You seem like a cool teacher. On my way, way I stop, thinking for a moment. I turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo. Oh. Yes. Did they ever catch that right? Yes. I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in the, a little bit in shock that Amanda had, was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her mother. Aww. 
Romaine must be done with the classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home. And maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Oh. Good idea. I pull up to the carpool and Amanda pops in, hops in the passenger, passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vic and I actually got, just gossiped about our celebrity, celebrity crushes. So you talked about Mario but Batali the whole time? It was very... It was a very productive meeting. Yeah. I'm very hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. Uh, I prefer making stuff at home. Cool. I think with our powers combined we can throw together a gourmet meal worthy of, a, of the food channel. I don't know about that, but I can promise you that it will at least be edible. Yes. That's the spirit. Yeah. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say somewhere. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. True. And that's okay. But also, sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective because, you know, maybe the par parents have also dealt with similar situations. Uh -huh. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? Uh -huh. What? Never mind. Look, sweetie, Mr. Vega said you have haven't been pers participating in class, and you're not turning things things in. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all, and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vegas' class. Oh. It's fine. He's fine. You pull up, up to the satellite. I, 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 Amanda, she's still texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. <sighs> uh-huh. I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. It's frustrating. Uh, I hear Emma R is going to, to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Mm -hmm. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Hey. Um, it's a. I don't think you'd get it. Okay. Who you text him? Hey. Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Hmm. Yep. Do you like Noah? Hey. What? No. Dad. Ugh. I can't believe you would. Oh. Dad. I mean, jeez. Why would you? Uh, uh, gross. Sorry, sorry. I'm just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Mm. Okay, okay. Jeez. Sure are making a big fuss about nothing. This is going well. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward to, to, and t turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. And when I get back home and start cooking some dinner. I found this artisanal mac and cheese recipe online that I've been dying to try. Artis artisanal? There's two ingredients to mac and cheese. Mac and then cheese. Mm -hmm. Well, a little bit more goes into it than that. Dad, please try and enjoy our finer things in life. The finer things in life. I think you of all people should be able to appreciate what one can do with cheese. Plus, it has bacon in it. Aren't we s s Aren't we a society collectively over bacon? Ugh. Bacon never stopped being, being good. It just has a PR problem. Oh. We get to work on the recipe. Amanda measuring things out and help handing them to me to dump them into a bowl. In the bowl. So I can feel useful. We both work up quite an appetite since the gross small food ravage our, ravage our digestive systems. Amanda puts me on bacon duty. I 
chop up a bunch and toss it in the pan to get it sizzling. Hmm. The key to good mac and cheese is balance of texture and flavor. Pops, not only do are we going to want to full, the fullness of the, the cheese and bacon, but we also need the counter palace with the crunchy mouth feel of breadcrumbs. Check on bacon. Still pink and rubbery. rubbery. I, get, I give the pieces a little stir. Wait, what's a mouth feel? You know, when you eat stuff and it, the texture. Um, yeah. listen, we've been watching a lot of food cha channel, a lot of the food channel, and I honestly don't know what it means. It just makes me feel sophisticated to say. No, no, I get it. Eat that. Every time I watch that channel, I just feel in order, hungry, jealous, insecure about my cooking ability, and then hungry again. I like the mouthfeel of that sentence. Oh my god. Amanda, mouthfeel is just, isn't just just about food. It's also about words that are fun to say. Gregarious? God, all these fancy words. Boisterous. Caddy Wampus. Tabernacle. What? All of a sudden, the ba bacon burst into flame. I must not have been paying attention to, to how hot the pan was. How did it burn? How did it burst into flames? Fire, fire, oh god. Fire? I ran around the kitchen looking for anything to put out the fire. Is it in the, is it in the pan? Just, just put a lid on it. I grab a cup of- No! Grab a cup of water and Amanda stashes it on my hand. You do not want to put water on a grease fire. Mm. Nope. She puts it down, down and Colin grabs a lid from the pantry. Yes. He places it on top of the flames and turns the heat down. I finally calm down. <laughs> as soon as I saw him going for all, like, no. No. Okay. Did I almost burn down our brand new house because I was too busy saying silly words? <laughs> Indubitably. Cool. Who wants takeout? Hey, Amanda and I order some Chinese food and eat it on the couch of our new living room. She flips on the TV. Oh, cool. Long Hall Ice Road Paranormal Ghost Truckers is on. Your favorite, right? Oh, hell yes! We have to make it over to the Canadian before the ice road melts and but also they're hunting ghosts. Oh. Also the trucks are haunted. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Column and Flint Gog Dogbone. The twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no! The ghosts the ghost done got, out of, got control of the truck. I can't steer on them, their damn ice roads. Let me use the EVP meter to try and communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die. Ah, um, I almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like that saying, you're gonna to die. Mm -hmm. That's because we're about to die, you. This is art. The episode ends and Amanda excuses herself and goes to go and start an argument on the internet. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Callum and Flint Dogbone after they, their disastrous ro ice road accident. Afterward, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. Alright. Alright, is this a save thing? Yeah, it's a save. I'm going to call that good for the night. For those of you who watched, thank you for watching. And if you liked it and would like to see more, go ahead and hit that like button. And I will see you in the next episode. All right now. Bye.